So this video is going to help you do some of the lab problems in chapter 2. Um, we have not, I have not covered all the problems, but I have covered some of them, uh, especially the ones that students have had trouble with, um, the instructions, the machine language instructions found in Appendix C. So the first problem is very similar to problem number 5. Uh, it's exactly the same, except that the bit patterns are different. So suppose the memory cells at addresses 00, 0 through 0, 05 in the machine described in Appendix C. So you have to be able to refer to Appendix C in your book as you do these problems. That is what gives you the instructions. So make sure you can look at that. Um, and also make sure you read the section about the fetch, decode, and execute cycle um, in your book. And this is um, in Chapter 2, page um, 88, 90, 91, 92, uh, 93, and so on and so forth. So read that section and then start working on these problems. So it says these are the addresses 00 through 05 and these are the contents so make sure you um, have this written down somewhere so when we move to the next slide you'll be able to uh, know what the contents are um, and it says assuming that the program counter initially contained 00 so that's where we're starting record the contents of the program counter instruction register and memory cell 0, 2. So whatever, however memory cell 0, 2 changes as we do all these different instructions at the end of each fetch phase of the machine cycle. Remember, there are three different phases of the machine cycle, fetch, decode, and execute. So we are asked only at the end of each fetch phase until the machine halts. Okay. So if we take a look, this is essentially what we are required to do. So we need to make a table and you are required to fill these columns, program counter, instruction register, and memory cell at 0 to at the end of each fetch phase until the program is done, until the machine halts, which means until we hit C0, 0, 0, which is the instruction to halt. Okay. So remember, the program counter always moves ahead one step of the instruction register. So if the instruction register gets loaded with the first instruction, the program counter holds the address of the next instruction ready to get that, get ready to fetch the next instruction. So at the first, at the end of the first fetch cycle, 2534 has been fetched by the instruction register. 2534 because that is the first instruction found in address cells 00 and 01. If you go back and um, take a look either at the problem in your book or if you look at the previous slide, it says, let's actually go back and look at it, uh, 00 and 01 has 2534. So program counter has moved on to the next address, which is 02. Instruction register has 2534. And remember, it's at the end of the fetch cycle, so nothing has been executed yet. So the fetch cycle says the instruction register has 2534. The memory cell 02 still has 35. Nothing has changed there. So if you go take a look at the next slide here, our solution after the first step, program counter at 02, instruction register with 2534 that has not been executed, it's just been fetched. And so memory cell at 02 is still 35. So let's move on to the next one. Once this instruction has been executed, it simply says load register 5 with bit pattern 34. So when this first step is done, when we move on to the next step to do the fetch instruction for the next, um, the, for the next line, register 5 has been loaded with bit pattern 34, just 34, the actual number. So now program counter has moved on to 04. We fetch the next set of instruction, which is 3502, which is found in 02 and 03, if you look at it. 3502. So the end of that fetch cycle, again, remember, this 3502 hasn't been executed yet, and 2534 has not made any changes to memory cell 02. It simply says load register 5 with bit pattern 34. So memory cell 02 still has 35 because nobody has changed anything with regards to that. Okay, so that's at the end of the second instruction. Now, when we move on to the next instruction, the second instruction would have been done, would have executed. Let's see what it does. Store the bit pattern in register 5 
to memory cell 02. So now something has changed in memory cell 02. We are storing the bit pattern in register 5. What's in register 5? We did that in the previous step 34. So essentially we are taking 34 and storing it to memory cell 02. So at the end of the next cycle, or at the end of the fetch instruction 3502, we are still here. The next instruction is C000, at which point in time 3502 has executed. So memory cell at 02 has 34 and program counter has moved on beyond 05, which is 06. And the machine halts because this instruction says pretty much stop. So this is what you're required to do. It says record the contents at the end of each fetch cycle. If it had said record the contents at the end of each execute cycle, then some of these contents would be a little different based on what has been uh, changed after the execution. Okay, so that's problem number five. Now problem number seven, again, we need to refer to appendix C for all of these problems. So keep the appendix handy. This says the following are instructions written in this machine language, just random instructions, and we need to essentially translate them into English. So here's the first one. This is 156C. So if you look at it, 1 is the opcode, 5 is the operand, and there's a description if you look in your appendix C, starting with the first one. If the opcode is 1, it says load the register 5 with bit pattern found in memory cell 6C. So that's what it is. So if you look at uh, the book, it says load the register R. R is nothing but 5 here. So load register 5 with bit pattern found in XY. Our XY is 6C. Likewise, load register 4. 1 stands for load. Um, load register 4 with bit pattern found in memory cell 02. 2 opcode, on the other hand, is also load, but we are not going into a memory cell. We are simply saying load register 1 with the bit pattern 03. So 1 will simply have 03. Whereas in the previous case, 4 will have whatever memory cell 02 has. In our previous example, it was 35. So 4 will actually have 35 or 34 or whatever it had. In this case, if the opcode is 2, then register 1 is going to simply have 03, the bit pattern 03. B1, B0 is a little bit more, has a little bit more to it. So if you look at it, B stands for jump. Jump to instruction located in memory cell B0 if the bit pattern in register 1 is equal to bit pattern in register 0. So that's a given. Notice there's no register 0 here. So that's assumed that we are always comparing to register 0, whatever is in this register. So that could be 1, 2, 3, or depending on whatever is in there. In this case, it happens to be 1. So jump to instruction in memory cell B0 if the bit pattern in register 1 is equal to bit pattern register 0. Else continue with normal execution. Okay, so you can decipher any of these based on your appendix C. All you need is that. So okay, so let's look at the last problem, which is similar to problem number 9. Uh, we go backwards, translate to machine language. The first one says load register 6 with the contents of memory address 6D. So looking at our appendix C, we know load is 1 or 2. So the question is, which one is it? Well, we are loading to register 6 with the contents of something in a memory address. So that means the opcode has to be 1. And we are loading register 6, so 6. And what are we loading? The contents of memory address 6D, so 166D. Now, if it says load register 6 with the bit pattern 6D, then you would have 266D because 2 is the opcode for loading a bit pattern directly. Now, the next one says store the contents of register 5 to the memory cell whose address is B1. Again, store is 3. And um, in this case, store to uh, the contents of register 5 to B1. So 3, 5, B1. The next one is to AND. AND the bit patterns in registers 4 and 5. So AND, if you look down the list, is 8 is the opcode. It says AND the bit patterns in registers S and T. In our case, S and T happens to be 4 and 5. So you simply say, instead of S and T, you put 4 and 5. And place the re result in register R. So R is 0 in our case. So 8, 0, 4, 5. 
So again, if you have your Appendix C handy and if you look at it, you can do all of these problems without any issues. Email me if you have any questions.